Hey what is going on everyone, Jason here at Waddle and welcome back to another tier list video. The first two videos can be found over here. So if you're interested in the classes that I took my freshman year and sophomore year, definitely click on these and watch these first. Because for my junior year, I actually took a lot of upper division courses, which is more neuroscience specific. But to balance it out, I also took some popular pre-med courses as well. But a little background on how I'm rating these classes is that I'm actually not taking into account the grade that I received in the class, but rather I'm grading these classes on how fun the classes were and how useful the class is for me to this day. And for junior year, actually, I only took 9 total classes throughout the whole year, which is actually significantly less than my freshman and sophomore year, and that in part is also for good reason. For starters, my junior year classes were a lot harder than my freshman year and sophomore year classes because a lot of them are upper division courses so all of these topics are going to be really niche and specific and I will have zero background knowledge when going into a class so naturally I felt like I needed to spend more time within these classes in order to get a grasp at the information that's presented and two I also took less classes because junior year was actually the year in which COVID kind of subsided a bit so I was able to go back to like in-person lectures and in-person discussions, which is something that I have not done since winter quarter of my freshman year. So I wanted to use some time to be able to adjust back into in-person learning, as well as be able to better manage some of my extracurriculars. Since my extracurriculars went from being online through Zoom, making things very easy to attend, to having to have to plan out things and making them happen in person. But yeah, let's jump into rating these classes, shall we? So let's start with Biomedical Research 5HA. Now this class is actually kind of special because it doesn't really pertain to the neuroscience major, but I decided to take Biomed Research 5HA because I was interested in applying to the Biomedical Research minor, and this one class was a prerequisite to be able to apply to the minor. Overall, I felt like this class was pretty straightforward. You just had two lecturers come in and talk about their current research. Professor Fluid was able to do a really good job at explaining each of the research papers. And from this class, I felt like I was able to get a pretty good understanding at analyzing papers, reading papers, and understanding graphs. Though unfortunately, the minor was a bit competitive and I wasn't able to get into the minor. I still felt like I learned a lot from 5HA, and I would definitely recommend this class to a freshman a sophomore who is also interested in doing scientific research. The great class between Neuroscience 102 and Musicology 68. Next class we're going to talk about is Neuroscience M101A. This is the core series class for the Neuroscience major and how the whole Neuroscience core series goes. So M101A, B, and C is that instead of having a whole quarter discussing one topic, each quarter is technically divided into three mini quarters. So for the span of around three and a half weeks, you'll be having one particular professor talking about very specific details just regarding the field of neuroscience. So to best summarize the things that I learned in Neuroscience M101A, we will be using three sentences. Ion channels go boo, muscles go twitchy, and brain makes images. That is as straightforward as I can summarize Neuroscience M101A a in a video like this. Professor Chandler was pretty funny. He cracked a lot of jokes during hybrid lectures. It inactivates. Ah, uh, did I say inactivate? Slap me good. And even though this class was kind of stressful since there was a major test every three weeks or so, I think this goes at the top of the grade section. Final class that I took during fall quarter of my junior year is Psychiatry 79. This class is titled Applied Positive Neuroscience, and this class basically just covered the neuroscience mechanisms that is responsible for a bunch of things on how you are feeling. So understanding your mood, motivation, and how to change things, I think that's pretty important. Because this class is a lower division course, it was actually pretty easy compared to my core neuroscience course, but I also had a lot of fun learning about it. Professor Corb actually made things pretty easy to understand. Even though I didn't have to take this course since it really meant nothing for my degree, I just took it because I thought it was fun and I thought I could learn something about it. And honestly, it wasn't a bad course, so I might put this in the solid category. So moving on to my winter courses, we first have Five Side 121. And what's interesting about this class is this class actually isn't a in-person class. This class was fully online and has been fully online even before COVID. This class was pretty detail heavy in terms of its content just because it talked a lot about the syndrome called DMD or Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And I thought this class was pretty cool because I actually really enjoyed the final project that we had to do which is interview someone who was struggling with a muscular dystrophy. So because of this project, I actually remembered a friend of a friend from high school who is suffering through a muscular dystrophy disease. So 
I got to bring awareness by creating a presentation for this class and we were able to raise some money for him so I'll link his story in the description below but if you'd like to donate as well the link is in the description. Great class! Up next we have Neuroscience M101B so the continuation of the Neuroscience Core class. Now this class was definitely harder than Neuroscience M101A but I think in part that's because of the content that's being covered. So again three sentences that summarize this course. How channels open close? How synaptic vesicles form and release, and how the nervous system develops in the embryo. So a lot more details and a lot more complicated neuroscience. This class was definitely a lot more stressful for me and I don't remember as much as what is being covered in this class. So unfortunately, I will have to put it in the forgettable category. Up next is Psych 120A or Cognitive Psychology. Now this class was definitely one of the more interesting classes that I've taken throughout junior year and that's just because I actually knew a thing or two about Cognitive Psychology. Nonetheless, it was still a pretty hard class and it did take me quite some time to be able to understand the information and Professor Marty has been an amazing professor that I got to listen to and I really enjoyed taking this class with Professor Monty because I felt like he really explained the concepts well. Again, if your degree requires you to take Psych 128, definitely try to take it with Professor Monty, highly recommended. Legendary class, legendary person. And finally, we have three classes to go, moving on to my spring quarter. We will start with Incomp 6W. It's just a little writing course that I have to take so I can get some med school requirements done. But I will say this class was actually kind of tough. I had to go to office hours a lot for this class, but Professor Lasovsky has been super kind, and I'm really glad that I was able to take his class as well. And I was actually his last ever class because he actually retired after spring 2022, and he has basically been teaching for almost 40 years. Honestly, pretty legendary class if I would say so myself. I also got to learn the ins and outs on a metaphor, which is actually kind of nice because growing up, I always never liked English that much, and I always sucked at like basically creating metaphors and picking up where metaphors are mentioned, so I'm glad that class kind of helped me out with that a bit. We next have Neuroscience M101C, or the third and final class of the Neuroscience Core Series. Now in my opinion, Neuroscience M101C had the most interesting neuroscience topics that they talked about, but for the third and final time, to summarize this class in three sentences. One, what makes you keep going in life? Two, how exactly do you remember stuff? And three, tech and how you think of stuff. So I felt like this was for sure my favorite neuroscience class that definitely made learning less of a chore and more for fun because it's cool stuff. So it's the newest things you can ever expect in neuroscience. So great class overall. And finally, for our last class that we took during my junior year, we have Psych 110, which is a class solely focused on conditioning and learning. I found that through his class, I didn't really have to take a lot of notes. Instead, I can just draw on his slides and add notes to it. So I found that super helpful. I still feel like this class has taught me a lot regarding how exactly they use different psych techniques in research. So if you need a slightly easier upper division to balance out your schedule, I would recommend Psych 110. Yeah, this class from what I remember is also really popular. Like I couldn't even get into the class because it was full when my enrollment hit. So I had to basically just like set notifications, check this class every now and then. And luckily for me, a few spots opened up and I snagged one right away. I wouldn't say this is necessarily a great class because I feel like I didn't learn as much as I was hoping for. But overall, I think it's still a pretty solid class. And there we have it. This is now tier list, which includes all of my classes up until junior year. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, definitely make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Join the WOD squad, best squad in the nation. And other than that, I want to wish you guys all a wild day. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>